Hello, this is Bhuvan Unelkar. I'm sitting in uh, Sydney, Australia, in what I call my home office. And I thought I will update you on uh, the assignments, particularly the first assignment in new technology alignment. I always found very helpful when I was doing my studies if the expectations of the assignments were clarified to me. So I thought I might do the same with all of you. In new technology alignment as you must have noticed, we are focusing less on the nitty gritties of the technology and more on how a particular technology aligns with the business, helps the business to capitalize on new opportunities or to handle the existing problems, challenges, and so on. So the assignment is focused on you identifying an existing bottleneck or an opportunity. So a, a problem, a challenge, or an opportunity in your business and then in that assignment the first assignment you develop your arguments for how a particular technology a mobile wireless network a BYOD a use of cloud and I'm not too fussed about the exact technology that you are using but I'm very keen to see how you demonstrate using what you have absorbed thus far in terms of the shift index in terms of the data the statistics that has been made available to us through the shift index and the various aspects that we have studied in the shift index that help you spot an opportunity or a problem and how a technology can help resolve it. So the assignment is focused on a practical problem. That is why you will find that there is a requirement for EVA, Employer Validation. As I have put in the text and in the discussion forum and in the, in the notes for the assignment, we want to ensure that this becomes a practical assignment. But at the same time, we are aware that some participants may be between jobs. Others may not have their boss agreeing to providing a EVA. Don't panic. In such cases, simply drop me an email with your justification and we can handle that situation. Having said that, I would still very highly prefer that you get your employer's endorsement for the assignment. And that way, it will also add value back to your organization and to you. Another important thing I want you to remember is make use of the template that I have provided. Not because it is the best template in the world. Perhaps you might have your own template which you use to write reports and papers at work. But right now, for assignment one and assignment two, 
please use the template I have provided. Apart from making it easier for me to expect the format, it is also easier for you so that you are not struggling with whether you should use a Times New Roman font or some other font, whether you should have a table of content or not. And no, I don't need a table of content. But you can change the headings to suit your description. Another very, very important thing I want you to remember is no theory. Not because I don't enjoy reading theory, I do. But because if you were to produce this kind of a paper or report for your employer, for your client, they're not interested in the theory. So paragraphs such as what is new technology, paragraphs such as what is innovation, paragraphs such as the theory on adoption of innovation, paragraphs such as this is what social media is or this is what cloud is. We don't need them. What we do need is how these technologies are being applied in your organization or likely to be applied. So very, very, very practical. And therefore the referencing also is expected to be very practical, which means don't reference Wikipedia, please. Nothing against it. It's just that you need some authentic sources, some good statistical data, your our own uh, shift index that we are heavily using, some other reading material that I might have given, and your own exploration. Books and journals are ideal. Make sure you have had a look at the marking scheme for both assignments I have given the requirement the assignment description and within each assignment description I have provided headings and the total marks against them now, I am aware that this is a senior level course with all of you fairly experienced people coming into this course. So I'm not fussed about small time marking. In fact, I would prefer not to mark the papers at all. But as, as the reality is, we need some sort of a scheme that says you have reached a level of competency. But by looking at the marking scheme in the assignment description, you will get a pretty good idea of what is expected. For example, in the first assignment, I have given five sections, each worth 20 points, 20 marks. So in the first part, you describe the problem. In the second part, you describe the technologies that you may consider that are aligning with the problem and so on till you also see that the practical aspect of your assignment gets 20 marks. No theory. You can include tables and you can include diagrams which are drawn by you. It's very easy to go into your business, into your client site, into your workplace, take permission, take a couple of diagrams, put them in this assignment. Please don't do that. Again, in a practical situation, you may get a opportunity to do so or you might have a need to do so. But while we are practicing how to create content, I would like you to create your own table create your own diagram or two and embed them in the assignment. So you have your assignment description. Please read it carefully. You have an assignment template which you can straight away use to start writing your, your assignment. Don't leave it till the last week. 
every week as you participate in the discussion forum please start writing your assignment when you submit it please submit it in word if you can because I love going through the assignments it gives me a lot of joy to just read the wonderful thought processes of participants like yourself but as I do that I also edit it and when I edit it I make small track changes or notes and whenever possible whenever there is a opportunity I try and email it back to you may not happen all the time but can happen and so if you send it to me in word it's much easier for me to to do the track changes and and send them back to you make it professional spell check grammar check I know it's not that important but it will be a great idea to get into the habit of doing that and you're all doing that during your discussion forums most of the posts are are excellent but we want the assignment also to be very professional get a friend you're confident to have a quick look at it label all the tables label all the diagrams correct figure numbers 1 2 3 4 5 reference them in your discussion and that way it will be a assignment that with some more iterations couple of iterations maybe after the subject is over and you might even be able to present it at a conference or get it published that's not the goal that's not the KPI for the course but that's certainly an aside that you may want to keep in mind I may not necessarily give such a detailed update again for assignment 2 because for most part what applies to the first assignment applies to the second assignment but if I can I might you are of course welcome to chat with me anytime you feel like by email or on the phone but do please keep in mind that in fairness to your fellow participants I would prefer if you don't send me your assignment before it is ready for submission and ask me to have a look at it because that will not be fair to everyone around but certainly during the discussion forums I am encouraging you to chat to discuss the assignment uh, to remove any confusions to get clarifications to get feedback uh, remember in this course your fellow participants are as good a source of knowledge as perhaps I might be I am also the facilitator but discussing and and passing comments on your fellow participants uh, outlines or proposals for the assignment is a fantastic way of learning in this subject so with that this is Bhuvan Unalkar signing off good luck stay relaxed stay regular and um, uh, hope you produce a fantastic uh, set of assignments take care Bye-bye.